Hi everyone, I'm here today with a experienced professional in the upstream gas sector and has worked extensively on immense projects and reputed organizations internationally and in Sri Lanka. Please welcome Mr. Upul Kulasinghe. Hi Mr. Upul. Hello. How are you today? I'm all right. Thank you very much. Trust you are the same. Likewise. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Upul, uh, I, I, we have this uh, question in our heads that Sri Lanka has a lot of natural resource. However, we've never addressed the fact of whether Sri Lanka actually has the possibility of having either oil or natural gas. What would you like to kind of enlighten us about it? We have both. In undeveloped resource reserves, there is no demarcation between gas and oil. Okay. It, everything is there in the reservoir. It is just that gas tends to be produced faster because it's lighter, it comes up to the surface quicker than oil. Okay. Um, so we do have, we have the full gamut from liquids to very light gases. Now perhaps a word or two of explanation when I say light gas, what it means is that we've got um, <coughs> lots of methane and so methane is CH4 upwards, ethane and so on. Those are the light hydrocarbons. Okay. The heavy hydrocarbons are ta the tar-like oils which you generally get in countries like Iran. Right. Which thankfully we don't have. So we have a lot less problem okay. in producing our reserves. Does that help you? Sure, sure. And where could we potentially find these natural resources in Sri Lanka? If you... <laughs> when President, as he was then, Premadasa, went to Singapore and came back and said, we will find hydrocarbons in Hambantota because the surface geologic geology is the same as Singapore. Okay, you know, there was a lot of truth in what he said because we do have hydrocarbons there. However, our discovered resources, if you like, are in northwestern Sri Lanka, about 40 kilometers west of Norochale, Putlam, that area, where we have discovered three hydrocarbon deposits. One which we can postulate with, a, with significant confidence, saying that, yes, it is there. That's about 300 billion cubic feet in what's called the Dorado field. A bigger one is Barracuda, which, is, which has got probably about 10 times the reserves, but owing to reservoir issues, we can't be as sure. And there's a third discovery called Walago, which could not be fully appraised because there were technical problems with the drill rig. But we have, to put it in lay terms, enough gas to produce 550 megawatts annually for 20 years of on the power. two discovery of electricity. Wow! On the two discoveries that we know of now. How come no one knows about this? There are people who know about it. As in the general public, like people like me and 
the general public in Sri Lanka? Because we do not have a, a formulated method of developing the gas. For example, if you take a hydroelectric project, you know, you put a dam, you impound the water again with the dam, and you produce the electricity. Sure. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Gas is not quite the same when you are developing these reserves. Okay. And there will be, most experts will have their own opinion of how to do it. I don't ever claim to have, the, have all the answers. Sure. Neither would somebody else. But we all have opinions um, on how these things could be developed. That there is no public knowledge, I think, is because nobody is prepared to stand up and say, yes, we can do it, and two, yes, how we are going to do it. So what you mean to say is Sri Lanka has enough natural gas. Yes. Of Norachole, mm -hmm. or close to Norachole. About 40 kilometers west. Right. So I'm guessing this is in the sea? Yes, oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, in, in, in the ocean that can be harvested, turned into energy, mm -hmm. in turn becoming electricity. Yep. And we could provide the country with 500... 550 megawatts for 20 years. 550 megawatts of power for 20 years. Yes. And no one's done anything about it. We've done, we've drilled. Okay. We know the gas is there. Okay. But beyond that, not much else. I, is there a reason, I mean, I'm guessing this was done some time ago. Um, is there a reason none of the governments that preceded it um, took any action for that action plan coming together? I perhaps am not the person to answer that question intelligently. All I can say is that the contractor in question wanted $863 million of an investment okay. to deliver the gas to a landfall in Nora or Norochale. Okay. I reckon that it can be done the same concept that they had okay. with some advantages for about three hundred and fifty million dollars and has this been potentially proposed to any um, government institution establishment ministry I don't think so I will talk about it to anybody who asks me the question sure but beyond that I don't think so because we don't seem to understand that everything starts with an idea. Correct. But what a lot of the bureaucrats in particular want is a fully developed, costed model with economic analysis and everything. And that will take six months to do and will require more than an individual, it requires a team. However, I can give you some salient points. Mm -hmm. the, the Dorado field, which is the smaller of the two, can produce 200 megawatts of power annually for 10 years. Okay. Okay. Or can produce the gas the equivalent of. So, that's fact. Okay. What the contractor wanted 860 million 
dollars to do i reckon can be done with 400 million say so half it half it mm-hmm. which transforms the economics of the development and if we sri lanka is you know is allowed to develop it our way mm-hmm. we can also use this as the vehicle to develop our expertise in upstream developments because at the moment what happens we award the contract to a uh, consultancy who will bring all their people over here at 2500 dollars a day and the costs go up mm. my concept has always been do as much as possible here okay which then you know if we pay one of our middle grade engineers 250 dollars a day don't you think he'll be happy absolutely right in so paying a thousand dollars two thousand dollars for some guy who will come tell us how to do our jobs mm-hmm. say thank you very much my pocket is now full i'll go home and that's what i'm trying to avoid yes i know <laughs> world renowned experts who have actually volunteered to come here and advise us and help us set up this nascent industry for free wow. they are prepared to donate their time and these are not uh I mean I don't know what the english word is but tuttu dega people mm-hmm. these are people who have risen to the very height of the oil and gas industry and number among them sri lankans also i say who go around the world advising operators on various problems they have in subsea production but we don't use their expertise one of them came here gave a presentation to what was the uh what became the pdasl and he volunteered he said tell me i will come at my expense and help you guys set it up and it still didn't go further no what do you think we can do as a as a nation as uh, as a, as citizens to kind of encourage uh our governments to kind of looking to prospering and nurturing such projects from going forward stop being so overawed by foreigners believe in ourselves have the backbone to think we can do it yeah okay. right and and that is all it is just a change in the mindset so it's all in the mindset it's all in the mindset so because with the guys that i have they will come they will stay here all they want are their hotel expenses paid and the return ticket nothing else they don't want any they they will do this for the sheer heck of doing this development see you know that has come from them they've already volunteered that they come here we use them once we have once we are once we have the channel for the expertise right we have perfectly competent engineers and technologists who will do the rest of it i see is there now you said we have the uh, gas reserves sub c yeah um off the coast of sri lanka mhm how do we actually go about i mean i know there there are a lot of 
elements and aspects that go into the whole project going ahead. Um, and Sri Lanka benefiting uh, immensely, especially in a crisis that we are in, where the electricity bills have skyrocketed. Yes. Uh, I don't think at least 60-70% of the country could even afford um, their electricity bills now with the current tariffs. And a project of this magnitude actually coming into play with a natural resource that Sri Lanka possesses would drastically disrupt the equilibrium. Um, how do you think we could actually harness this gas, convert it into electricity or transport it to land, convert it into electricity and put it into the grid so that we could reduce or subsidize um, cost of electricity? Just like you said, exactly what you said, produce it, transport it, produce electricity. That's it. So Very it's that si simple. It's that simple. So it's three steps. Yeah. It's like ABC. <laughs> and we still haven't done anything about it. No, because the mindset is Ayo Apita Salina Neokarana. Whereas there is at least one local bank who is prepared to lead the consortium to finance the project. Same. I mean, I'm lost for words, to be honest. Um, when we started this conversation, um, I had no idea that it would, Sri Lanka would have such a resource that is not utilized. And um, as a concerned citizen, um, I would like to put the ball onto your court by saying, what can or what will you do to kind of at least get it to the officials that need to know and see this as a experienced expert in the trade? It is changing the mindset. We not only have, just let me digress a little. So I talked about two fields which are mainly gas. Okay. It's about nine between ninety three and ninety five percent methane. So it's superb gas. So it's very good quality. Very good quality. No processing problems, none of the nasties like mercury and carbon dioxide and so on. Right? And in in the midst of all of this, we also have hydrocarbon liquids, light condensate, which is like petrol. I see. Now, I know people, I shouldn't say this, but since this was in my early days when I was working at a gas terminal in the UK, there were people who were using that light condensate in their vehicles, straight. In Sri Lanka? No, no. It's abroad. Okay. Right? So, with the minimal processing, we will have a very, very high quality petrol-like hydrocarbon. So we have all of this. I'm perhaps confusing the issue a little bit by my digression. So I, I will leave it That's because, fine. because that is and concentrate on the on developing the gas. Sure. We have got enough gas. Within four years of declaration of commerciality and a project go ahead, we can be producing gas, i.e. electricity, because we will be producing electricity with the gas. That's, that's all you can do. All this nonsense about let's do LNG and so on, requires huge reserves that Sri Lanka does not have at the moment, probably unlikely to have. And LNG, for example, requires very, very sophisticated infrastructure. 
Right. And it will take us 15 years just to develop the infrastructures. Why bother? Sure. So, what, in short, what you mean to say is we have the resource, we have the individuals capable of executing the project. Absolutely. We do at least know majority of the know-how. If not, we have professionals who are willing to come into Sri Lanka free of charge or at a minimal fee um, to lead the project in terms of the technology and the know-how that we do not potentially possess. Yep. And we just haven't done it. Correct. It is perhaps because we have this mentality of write a tender, invite tenders and take it from there. Because I doubt whether any of our civil servants mm -hmm. understand I, sorry, I stand corrected. I know they don't because they refer to natural gas as LNG and interchangeably. Because I have read documents where they talk about LNG. It, I have to go through about half the document before I realize they are not talking about liquefied natural gas, but gas is natural gas. So when our decision makers don't seem to understand that fundamental point, we got one hell of a job ahead of us. So. And you can state all of this on record with responsibility. Yes, absolutely. Do we, just digressing now, do we have other gas experts in the country? I know of Sri Lankans, not necessarily in country. Now, like the gentleman I talked about, he's based in the UK because that, that's convenient for him. Another one, again based in the UK, but goes around the world. We have people. And once the conceptual work for the gas development is sorted, the rest of it is like any major piping project. And we have the capability to do that. We have more than the capability. Out of all the na nations I've worked with, overall, I'm most impressed by the Sri Lankans. That's a very proud statement. Absolutely. You know, and, and this is what convinces me that if we can get the technical know-how, we are home and dry. Understood. So, all I could hope for is that at least someone sees this video and... Um, shows it to the officials that are in charge and we at least start somewhere to get this project on the road even the longest journey starts with the first step absolutely right and yes i sincerely hope so Excellent. thank you so very much mr Poole. it's been a pleasure and it's, it's been very enlightening um, and um, I'm still honestly shocked and I'm sure all our viewers would be too by just hearing about this. I'm pleased for Right Media to give me this opportunity of airing something which I am convinced will transform our upstream oil and gas capability so that it is not only developing our indigenous resource but with the technical knowledge and the experience we will have gained we can offer our services to other countries sure absolutely so yeah thank you very much thank you thank you thank you very much mr Bull. Thank you, Mr. Novin.